good evening everybody and welcome to this uh, moa master class uh, today we have with us dr sanjay kulkarni who is an md microbiology and he is a microbiologist and hospital infection control consultant and he, i think he has more than 20, 24 years of experience in this field and he has been working with uh, lot of orthopedic surgeons also he is a part of the ioa trauma team where we take lectures all across the country and his lectures are much appreciated so we have called him today to speak on the topic of ot cleaning disinfection and microbiological sampling so welcome to you sir and over to you thank you sir good evening to all i am dr kulkarni so my topic for today is ot cleaning disinfection and microbiological sampling so we will go through the basics of these these areas in a short period of time okay some basic concepts we need to keep in mind first that the ot is designed as a controlled environment so control of the environmental contamination forms a very important part of this second thing is if you see the definition of sterilization microbiologically it means killing of all life forms nothing survives so naturally it's obvious that accepted by sterilization methods like autoclaving and eto gas plasma and uh, other methods of sterilization cannot be applied to a room so this means that the ot is never microbiologically sterile at any time so mm -hmm. this is a very important fact we need to keep in mind at all times so the basic strategy for control of contamination in the ot would be first to minimize the entry of the organisms second should be to prevent those who have entered from reaching the surgical wound and the third will be to kill as many as possible to keep the residual number to the minimum so the first one we usually achieve through ot design and general work practice modifications second is usually achieved through asepsis and ot discipline during surgery use of laminar flow and other infection prevention measures and the third is where ot cleaning and disinfection fumigation comes in so this is what we'll talk about in short today okay now what is the risk of infection first of all we expose sterile tissues for a long time during surgery which leads to more bacteria reaching the surgical wound so this factor is, plays a very important role in deciding whether the wound will end up getting infected later or not so naturally in an operative scenario there is a higher than normal risk of infection so that is why this cleaning and disinfection of the area the room where you are going to operate becomes very very important okay now there are some basic requirements for better cleaning and disinfection whatever system we may follow so we'll just go through that quickly the first is don't use any brooms nothing that will aerosolize the dust so brooms generally create airborne dust which will resettle down in the same room so it will not serve the purpose of cleaning at all so instead of that dry mop use is more recommended they actually hold the dust so it does not spread or become airborne the only thing is they have to be cleaned after every use because they hold the dust by electrostatic mechanisms second thing is the cleaning technique the wet mopping technique is very important so single bucket double bucket triple bucket there are various modalities of cleaning but if you see in that all these systems the mop goes into the cleaning solution and this is what it ends up looking like i can see in the picture how solid it is and remember we are diluting the disinfectants here so their ability to kill is sort of limited so if a large number of bacteria go into these solutions they may survive and they will spread through the mop so instead of that we should have a method where the mop does not go into the cleaning solution so this is what we would like i would like to suggest when you are cleaning equipments the solution is prepared in a bottle like this you can use any drinking water bottle just don't use mineral water bottles because they can be mistaken for water bottles then somebody may drink the solution so prepare it in a bottle put it on a folded mop and wipe the surface in one direction so very simple method so when person goes from one instrument to another they can just change the fold of the mop after using two or three folds the mop should be kept aside for washing and the fresh mop should be used to continue the cleaning so this is a very simple way to clean the equipments in the operation theaters when wiping floors we can use a garden spray or even a bottle if it is practically possible so a small ot the solution is sprayed using a garden spray and a wet mop is rinsed with plain water squeezed out and then it is used to wipe the floor with pressure so the water should be changed whenever it becomes soiled and whenever we change the room 
So these two methods can be used for cleaning equipment and floors. And here you can notice that the mop or the cleaning cloth will not go into the solution. So it remains effective to the last drop. The important is the wet time, the contact time. Once you wipe it, the solution should remain wet on the surface for at least one to two minutes for proper disinfection. So that is the amount of solution we need to apply to the mop or spray onto the floor. Okay. Now there are some other things that we need to do to enhance cleaning. The first thing is allow time for cleaning. So this is a very important point in our Indian OTs. We don't allow time for cleaning between cases. So this I would like to recommend, suggest everybody that please pay attention to this. This is very, very important because if we hurry up the cleaning, then it doesn't happen properly. So your next patient will be at higher risk. Okay. Next thing is avoid domestic vacuum. You are using them. If you want to use a vacuum cleaner, uh, there are hospital grade vacuum cleaners with HEPA filters. Those are what should be used. Then make the OT easy to clean. So design, it plays a role here. So minimize horizontal surfaces and joints as much as possible. Minimize congestion. And most importantly, when you're working during surgery, do not throw anything on the floor, especially biomedical waste. So to facilitate this, we can arrange the biomedical bins in a proper manner. Normally, they will end up at the wall in most of the OTs. What we can do is we can keep the yellow bin at the table because that is where the cotton mops and things that go into the yellow bin are generated. So those can be thrown directly into the yellow bin. The others can be at the anesthesia machine, the red, blue and the sharps container. That is where that type of biomedical waste is generated. So the important thing is we should try, try and throw the waste directly into the appropriate container and not anywhere else. So this will definitely help reduce contamination of the OT and also reduce the cleaning time required after the case. Okay, so this is a very important part. Next is a lot of materials coming comes into the OT. Normally we use cardboard boxes many times. So this should be avoided because they bring in a lot of dust and microbes and they cannot be wet wiped with any disinfectant. Instead of that, we can use regular plastic boxes with covers to store all these items. And if we have to have storage in the OT, then it is better to use closed racks rather than open racks. So the cleaning time and the cleaning requirement is reduced. Okay? Then it is very important to develop your own protocol for cleaning your theater because every theater is different. So the sequence, the number of people available who will do what will vary from one OT to another. So develop your own SOP and train your staff to follow it. This is what is going to give you the most results. Okay? Then water quality is very important. Always use drinking water quality as a minimum standard. You can go for higher ones like RO, etc. Provided you can afford the cost because they are very costly. So drinking water quality is what is minimally recommended. Never use bore water or well water because they are always contaminated. So as we saw previously, we are diluting chemicals. If the contamination is more in the water, it may not get killed and that will actually spread to all your OT complex. So avoid these two sources of water at all times for the OT. Then coming to the types of OT cleaning, there are basically four types. The first one is start of the day, morning cleaning, what we call as. So in this, we clean all the horizontal surfaces with the disinfectants. This has to be done even if there is no case on that day. So basically, the OT complex should be cleaned minimum once every day morning, even if there is no case. The second type is between cases cleaning and the third is end of the day. This will see in the next slide. The fourth is periodic detailed wash down. So here the entire theater from the ceiling down to the floor and all the equipment in that is cleaned thoroughly. So here we first use soap water wiping followed by disinfectant wiping and then fumigation as per your protocol. So this detailed wash has to be done at least once a month or more frequently depending on, or lo on your load and soiling. So this is important to remove all the accumulated dust, clean all those areas which are not cleaned in the daily cleaning like ceilings, upper part of the walls or cracks and crevices of the equipments, etc. So periodically we have to remove all the accumulated dust. Okay? Then other rooms in the OT complex also should be cleaned twice a day or more frequently depending on the soiling. So you will have to monitor the amount of dust that comes into the other rooms and then decide your protocol whether to clean per shift or twice a day is sufficient for your, your setup. Okay? Next we go to the cleaning between the cases in little bit detail. 
so this part is very critical there are two sections to this one is a dirty part of the job and other is the clean part of the job so once the patient is shifted out the first thing that has to be done is cleaning the blood spills first then removing the linen and the used instruments and then removing the waste so the sequence is very important this has to be followed the dirty things have to activities have to be completed first after this the cleaning person should ideally remove the gloves perform hand hygiene and wear different set of gloves and then continue with the clean part of the job that is cleaning all the equipment that is used in the surgery that is ot table lights sterile instrument trolleys anesthesia machine the medication area and any other equipment used in the surgery and the floor this has to be wiped with a disinfectant so this segregation of clean and dirty activity during this cleaning is very very important normally this is where most of the mistakes happen coming to the end of the list or cleaning after all cases the protocol is the same the steps are the same as cleaning between the cases only here we wipe all the equipment completely remember in the morning we have wiped only the horizontal surfaces now when all cases are over the entire table the entire anesthesia machine entire suction machine entire cm everything has to be wiped from top to bottom and the floor should be ideally wiped twice if you have a scrubbing machine it is preferred to scrub the floor with soap water first and then wipe it with a disinfectant after this the ot is either closed for the day or you proceed to fumigation as per your protocol so this is the cleaning between the cases and end of the list okay now coming to fumigation as i mentioned in my first slide remember we cannot sterilize a room so fumigation is not sterilization it is what we call as terminal disinfection so this is a disinfection level in which we kill everything all viable bacteria plus a good amount of spores as as much as possible that is kill as much as possible but it is definitely not sterilization like what we get in autoclaving or eto or gas plasma machines so we have to remember that even after fumigation something may always remain back in the ot this is why we need to follow it all asepsis during surgery okay second thing is fumigation methods or fumigation protocol has microbiological rationale but no clear statistical evidence that it directly helps in reducing surgical site infections but it is a thing that is helping it reduce so we should go for it in certain conditions now what about hepa filtered ot with positive pressure so these theaters the fumigation procedures can be stopped provided the following four things are correct this is very important in indian scenario because these four things may not be correct in most of the hospitals in indian scenario first is hepa filter system design and function has to be perfect second thing ot discipline of everyone in from the surgeon anesthetist and the ot staff everybody has to follow proper ot discipline third is asepsis during post op care has to be properly assured and monitored and the ot surface cleaning has to be as best as possible so if you can assure all four of these in your setups then reliably we could stop fumigation if you have any doubt in any of these four it is better to reconsider whether to continue fumigating or not okay then how frequently to do it so if you decide to fumigate if you are using the ot every day then ideally fumigation should be done every day because you need to have a disinfected ot every day morning the whole bio burden gets on accumulated during the day time that has to be reduced in some cases if you are not using the ot every day then it would be prudent to fumigate it on the night before the case and then again repeat it after you finish all the cases on the second day so the frequency will depend on your load of and frequency of ot use okay so that's how you can plan it out then fumigation is a method of disinfection and thorough cleaning before fumigation is a must because any residual dust or organic matter or debris will interfere with the action of the fumigation chemical so all this has to be removed first and then you apply the chemical using different methods for fumigation only then you will have the maximum effect and remember it has no residual effect the moment to re enter the theater contamination of the theater again begins because we keep on releasing our commensal flora continuously so there is no residual effect for fumigation okay now these are the available reagents and methods that we follow in india usually one is a traditional method of formalin fumigation 
second is fogging with newer chemicals which contain aldehydes or hydrogen peroxide with silver ions now this hydrogen peroxide should not be confused with what is used in the west what they use in the western countries is called as hydrogen peroxide vapor we don't have hydrogen peroxide vapor in india neither do we have the machines to create and apply the vapor so that method is not available in india as yet and it is very costly the third thing is ultraviolet radiation i think many old ot's may still be having these ultraviolet tubes on the ceiling so if you see the range of the effective decontamination of the ultraviolet radiation it is hardly 3 to 4 feet from the source so if you put a tube high up on the wall or on the ceiling we cannot expect them to disinfect your table surface the floor the light the anesthesia machine etc so this method does not disinfect the entire ot and should not be used newer ue UV technology is there but not yet available in india which is want to be more effective but presently it is too costly for indian scenarios i have not mentioned the other methods like ozone and vapor and hydrogen peroxide because generally they are not available in our country as it and ozone is not yet proved that it is still into the experimental research phase okay now let's go on to so uv radiation gets uh, uh, crossed out there itself so what remains with us is formal fumigation or using the newer chemicals so these are the two options we have okay now when any chemical or gas is used for disinfection these are the parameters which are very important for achieving that desired level of disinfection first thing is contact of the chemical with the microbes second thing is concentration of the chemical has to be maintained throughout the process whatever time the process takes second thing is third thing is contact time so the chemical has to remain in touch with the microbes for a certain period of time and pre cleaning of the surface you want to disinfect so these four factors affect the fumigation there are others which i have not mentioned because they don't directly affect the fumigation that we do now coming to formalin if you see the requirements for disinfection by formalin this is the simple thing bacteria for bacterial action it is a gas method of fumigation so we have to heat the formalin and the gas should achieve 1100 ppm concentration in the ot air first of all plus it has to have 70% humidity at a 20 to 20 degree centigrade temperature and these conditions has to be maintained for 10 hours for adequate bactericidal action so if you calculate according to this we need to use almost 400 to 500 ml of concentrated formalin per 1000 cubic foot plus potassium permanganate or heat we generate the gas we hold it for 10 hours after which we need to neutralize we should we cannot use an exhaust because that will pull in unsterile air into the ot so we have to neutralize the fumes using liquor ammonia so this is the proportion so this is a very 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 complicated method and that is why we need to stop phase out formalin so, so very difficult to maintain the required conditions of concentration we never can use 400 500 ml of formalin because it is too much too much irritation okay so basically the method that is practiced in most of the hospitals using formalin itself will not give the required disinfection okay second thing very complicated procedure lot of mistakes can happen okay third thing is exposure to a carcinogen that is known formalin and to liquor ammonia which is i consider to be even more dangerous because it has immediate effects once you get exposed to the vapors and there is a myth that if the eyes water or the throat gets irritation once you go into the ot re fumigation kadak ho gaya so it's all a big myth because for human irritation the concentration of formalin gas required is less than 1 ppm in the air whereas we have just seen that for bactericidal action we need 1100 ppm so there is a difference of nearly 1000 ppm in the bactericidal level and the level required for human irritation so the two things never correlate eye irritation of eyes and throat does not mean that your ot is properly disinfected so this myth is a very important one to bust so formalin fumigation is neither practical nor reliable method for achieving the level of disinfection that we need and that is why it should be phased out it is a carcinogenicity and that is a separate reason by itself it is not the main reason because we continue to use so many carcinogens in known amounts in other areas so carcinogenic is not the reason it is not giving the disinfection results that we desire that is the main reason why it should phase it out then what can we use so these are two products or i mean the 
chemicals which are available now in the Indian scenario, commonly used in most of the hospitals. One is aldehyde based. Example product is bastosid. Second thing is hydrogen peroxide with silver ions. So example is EcoShield. There are many different brands which have these contents. And these are basically high level disinfectants. So high level disinfectants kill all vegetative bacteria up to mycobacterium tuberculosis and a good amount of spores. Okay. So this level of chemical disinfection is what is required for the OT. So we can choose any one of this. Bactericidal efficacy of both is as equal to each other. However, hydrogen peroxide works out to be costlier than aldehydes. So you need to do the costing before you select the product. And it can be corrosive because although they add inhibitors in the hydrogen peroxide products, the steel quality in the OT also has an effect. So if the steel quality is not good, corrosion risk is more higher in that theater if you are using hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Never use cotton and ammonium compounds. There are a lot of products in the market which contain these chemicals. So these are basically low level disinfectant molecules. So these can be identified if you check the content of the bottle. They are often called as quats or cotton for in short for cotton and ammonium compounds. These are some example names. I'm sorry for the spelling mistake there. Uh, benzalkonium chloride is one quart. Then they have usually big names like alkyl, dimethyl, benzyl, ammonium chloride. So if you see any big names like this in the contents on your bottle of chemical, then it may be mostly a quart. So these are low level disinfectants. These are not to be used for OT or any critical area disinfection. Okay, so avoid these products. Now, when you are using newer chemicals like aldehydes or hydrogen peroxide, it is best to follow the label directions for dilution and application. So I've just given the examples here. You can actually refer to the label on the product that you're using for the proper directions. For surface wiping, aldehydes usually are used in a 0.5 to 1% dilution. And for fumigation, it's usually 2%. Whereas for hydrogen peroxide, you need 10% and 20% respectively. Then application methods for these chemicals is either by wiping or fogging or spraying. So wiping and fogging is what is commonly used in most of our OTs. Contact periods for the two activities are different. For surface cleaning, minimum one to two minutes. <clears throat> the ideal time actually is five to 10 minutes, but practically that is not possible. When it, many studies have shown that even one to two minutes will achieve the same effect. So that should be timing should be followed. And for fumigation with these agents, the contact period, once you apply the chemical using fogging method, you have to keep the OT closed for one hour minimum. After that, you can use it anytime. Now, if you're doing fogging, then it is important to calculate the proper volume of solution that you should apply to the OT. So this is generally 400 ml, 400 ml per thousand cubic foot. So if, for example, if you have an OT of 20 by 20 by 10 feet, then your OT volume is 4000 cubic foot. And for this, you need to use 1600 ml of diluted solution. For example, if you're using bastocid, then it means 1600 ml of 2% bastocid solution or 1600 ml of 20% hydrogen peroxide with silver ion solution. So proper amount of solution has to be calculated because the, that much quantity of chemical should be applied to all the surfaces. And fogging, although some guidelines say fogging should not be done in a patient care area, we generally use fogging because it's the best method to apply the chemical to every surface in the OT. No patient is present or nobody is present in the OT while the fogging is done. So the risk of exposure is minimal or completely absent. Okay, So this is why fogging can be done. Now what machines to be used? So if the one on the left that you see, one with the plate on the bottom, is called as a fumigator. So this machine is to be used only for formalin. You cannot use the newer chemicals in this machine because the basic principle of both the methods are different. Formalin is a gas method of fumigation, whereas the newer chemicals are applied as fine aerosols, that is liquid application. So this fumigator cannot bring about that aerosol generation. So it is not to be used for newer chemicals like bachelor's seed or eco shield or some similar brands. The machine on the right is what is to be used for the newer chemicals that is called as a fogger machine. So using the proper machine is very, very important because if the method of application is wrong, then the chemical will not give you the adequate disinfection. So go for the proper machine for application. Now, after a positive case, that is HIV positive or hepatitis B or hepatitis C, these are the three viruses which we refer to when we say a positive case, 
no special ot cleaning measures should be required our daily cleaning method should be set up in such a way that it will take care of all infections because in infection prevention we need to consider all patients as potentially infected and secondly keep in mind that serological test that we do before surgery can be false negative there's no way of finding out who is false negative and who is really negative just by looking at the report we need to do a lot of investigations for that okay so the currently available disinfectants have adequate bactericidal spectrum to take care of all these viruses and if you combine that with proper cleaning methods the two together should be perfectly adequate for taking care of any contamination after a positive case so no special ot cleaning measures should be done after a positive case what would be more important is to develop a proper method train the staff to follow it every time and to help the staff prevent exposure to blood body fluids encourage them to use proper personal protective equipment that is pp like utility gloves covered shoes etc so their exposure should be prevented so this is what should be focused upon in ot cleaning okay now there is some confusion about cleaning blood and body fluid spills because i see across various status different different chemicals are used and there is a saying many people believe that hypo is compulsory so if you look at the guidelines this is the wording decontaminating with fresh germicidal chemical or at of at least intermediate level disinfectant potency so hypo is one of the chemicals you can use but it is not mandatory you can use any high level disinfectant for the clean, cleaning blood spills in the ot another reason why this is required is if i apply hypo to my steel surfaces every day eventually i run a very high risk of corrosion corrosion so it is best to use something that is non corrosive but a high level disinfectant for cleaning blood spills so the basic thing here is hypochlorite is not mandatory you can go for other high level disinfectants okay now once you do the cleaning and fumigation and everything we need to know whether anything is left back and we need some microbiological monitoring because this infection is a blind process we cannot see the bacteria being killed there is no real time test to monitor how many have been killed or how many are left over immediately after the procedure okay for example we cannot open the ot after fumigation take a swab and see immediately so many bacteria remaining there are new techniques called as bioluminescence but they are still not yet properly standardized and they are still too costly for india so we need to have some microbiological monitoring to ensure to monitor that our cleaning disinfection is being done properly of course these tests also have the limitations okay the most important thing regarding microbiological sampling is records records and records so maintain your ot swab air sample water testing records very very meticulously because they are extremely important medical legally okay then coming to ot swabs if you have a new ot or if you have done civil construction then ideally we need three sets of swabs to be taken all three should be negative before you can use the theater so this is very very medical legally important to have these records okay in an existing theater monthly ot swab should be done and these are the minimum sites that should be sampled so ot table trolley lights boils any one wall floor and the cm you can have extra in addition to this for example a suction machine or one more wall depending on the amount of equipment that you have and the type of surgery you are doing so these are the minimum ones coming to air sampling usually this is done in an empty theater with your ventilation equipment running okay so if you have a hepa filter ot then the frequency suggested frequency for air sampling is once a week in an empty theater so this should be done first thing in the morning by exposing the culture plate or by using an air sampler machine in non ventilated theaters we would like to suggest once a month frequency because many of the non ventilated theaters all of them in fact will be having a split ac and any air handling equipment cannot be cleaned internally frequently so that air coming out from the ac is not going to be sterile so we need to monitor it so once a month is okay if you are doing ac cleaning regularly if you are not cleaning the ac regularly then i would suggest increasing the frequency of your air monitoring okay so this can help to pick up any contamination or what type of organisms are coming out from your ac split ac intraoperative air sampling also is recommended for hepa filter laminar photo theaters 
So there is no guideline on the frequency of how much to do it. So again, here once a month is what I would like to recommend minimum. And many times in my personal experience, I have seen that intraoperative sampling helps me pick up any carriers or staph aureus in the OT staff. So this is normally carried in the anterior nares and it comes into the air with the breathing. So this can lead to surgical site infection in that particular theater. Okay? Then water is very, very important. It reaches every square inch of your OT through cleaning and disinfection processes. So we need to monitor the microbial quality of the water. Plus we are using it for the surgical scrub also. So once a month water testing from the scrub basin tap should be done. Ideal test would be the plate count in which the number of colony forming units per ml is known and the type of organisms also can be identified. If that is not available, then you can go for the coliform test, which will detect mainly only the coliforms. It has, that's a limitation. Okay. So records of all these micro monitoring testing have to be maintained by every theater. And remember the medical legal importance of all this. Plus, this will also tell you how effective is your cleaning and disinfection. Okay. Next thing is, this is just some images to show you examples of things that we use. So you can see the test tubes with the swabs are the types to be used for OT swab sampling. The culture plate at the bottom is the one which is exposed showing to the air sampling and that is showing the growth of fungus and other bacteria. And on the right, you can see an air sampling machine. So this is a bit expensive, may not be available in all laboratories. So instead of that, a simple set plate also will do. Okay. Then coming to the results of the monitoring, in OT soft's ideal result, of course, is no growth. So if that is there, we can go ahead and use the OT directly. No action need to be taken. If you get growth of a few commensals, like coagulase, negative step, whatever it is, cons here, from one, just one or two sites, then you can just clean that area and proceed with your surgery. But if you get heavy growth of commensals from many places or heavy growth from one or two places, or you get, grow a pathogen like a step aureus or any gram negative, any fungus, any spore bearing vector from any of the swabs, definitely OT should be recleaned again fumigated and the repeat swabs have to be taken to prove that your fumigation has now worked and the swabs are negative okay in case of air samples again ideal result is no growth in case of non-ventilated ot's where the hepa filter system is not there more than 30 colonies should not grow on that plate now 30 again is not a specific guideline there are no guidelines regarding non-ventilated theaters so this is what is generally followed across most ot's that's why i put it there okay so, and of course, no pathogen should be grown like a gram negative or a fungus or a staph aureus. So, if any of this happens, we need to investigate the source, correct the mistake or the fault that is there and repeat the sampling to ensure that the fault is rectified. In, for a HEPA filter theater, laminar flow HEPA filter theater, the number of colonies allowed on the OT table is not more than one. So, it should be zero or one. Anything more than that, the system needs to be investigated. Now, the scope of investigation details are outside the scope of this present. It will take a long time. So I won't be mentioning all those things, but we need to investigate. Remember that. Okay. For NABH, most of the hospital going for NABH, regarding OT cleaning and disinfection, these things are important. The hospital needs to have a written SOP for cleaning and disinfection, whatever protocols are followed. Well-defined protocols for chemical use, especially the cleaning staff should be properly aware of how to use, how to dilute, what concentration to use, etc. And all that needs to be written down in your SOP. Cleaning registers or records to be maintained OT-wise, fumigation registers similarly. Monitoring of the cleaning should be done by the staff or the infection controllers using a checklist on a daily basis because it's a critical area. Then, as I mentioned previously, microbiological monitoring reports have to be maintained. Okay and staff training records have to be maintained that they have been trained regarding the SOP to be followed for OT cleaning and disinfection in your setup. So these are the things required for NABH. Okay? So to summarize, we need to do detailed planning of the cleaning and disinfection process in your setup. That is what is going to give you the most effective uh, cleaning and disinfection. Second thing is training of the staff. Once we define the methods, the staff needs to do exactly what to do and this training has to be repeated periodically say every quarterly or every six monthly at least so that there is a staff change that they forget so all those things have to be taken care of okay then use of chemical disinfectants has to be done very very correctly 
so selection of the proper chemical proper dilution methods proper application methods and proper contact period these are the important things that should be followed when you are using disinfectants in the ot meticulous cleaning before every fumigation is extremely important for the disinfection to work okay no special cleaning or disinfection for ot after doing a positive case so this is very very important and we need to maintain the cleaning and disinfection records up to date because again these also are medical legally important so thank you for your time and attention and have a good day thank you thank you very much sir the uh, time has <laughs> ended ka yes